Bailey. Let's go home and start making a video, okay, girl? Cut a block of basswood that's exactly 38 millimeters wide by 38 millimeters wide by 76 millimeters long. And also make sure the grain is running along the length of the wood. Now using a combination square, I'm making sure the top and bottom are square and true to all four sides. Perfect. Now we're going to adjust our combination ruler to 19 millimeters or three quarters of an inch and we're going to make center lines along all four sides of the block. Okay, I make my mark. I'm going to confirm that it's in the center by flipping the block over and perfect, it matches. And I'm going to carry that line along the length. We're going to do this on all four sides. Then I write a B for bottom on one side of the block. And top. Taking your combination ruler again, we're going to adjust it to 13 millimeters. Rest it on the bottom of the block. And we're going to mark our first line. Next, we're going to adjust it to 29 millimeters. 40 millimeters. 48 and 71 millimeters. So again, it's 13, 29, 40, 48, and 71 millimeters. We're going to do this on all four sides. Now let's discuss what corner we're going to use for the beak. We want the beak to be nice and strong. So that means that we need to pick a corner with the most grain running into it. See how the grain is flowing? See how the grain is flowing right into that corner? That's perfect. That's what we need. Now see this corner? It's, it's pretty good. So we could use that if we wanted to. That corner is not so good, as well as that corner. So let's pick that corner, because it has the most grain running into it. So that's going to be the front of the block. So we're going to label the front of the block side one and side two. Next, I want to draw a line from that corner to that corner, and I'm going to use a combination square. I'm going to rest the combination square, line it up from corner to corner, and make a mark. After I make the mark, I'm going to make two more, one to the right and one to the left. Those lines are going to be three millimeters apart. See? three millimeters apart and three millimeters apart. Perfect. The next step is labeling each line starting from the top of the block. This line will be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H.
we're going to start by carving the owl's head and working our way down to the branch. This will allow us to rest our combination square on the flat bottom of the block so we can make accurate measurements during the carving process. Taking your knife, this one is 38 millimeters long, we're going to make a stop cut on line E, sides 1 and 2. Sides 3 and 4, which is the back of the block, we're not going to touch. After you make those stop cuts, take your knife, drop it about 5 millimeters below line E, and on a 45 degree angle, carve it into that stop cut. You can also use a larger knife. Perfect. Remember, we're not going to touch 3 and 4. Taking your pencil, starting slightly above line E, we're going to sketch in a slope that ends at line C. This is our guideline for the beak. See? So now we have to remove all this wood. We're going to use our push cut. Notice the thumb is behind the blade. And I'm pushing the blade through the wood while I steer the knife. And we're going to remove all this wood up to line C. I switch to a larger blade to cover more of the wood. Perfect. Now, to make sure it's symmetrical on both sides, I'm going to use dividers. And see the center line? I'm measuring from E to the top of the slope on both sides. Perfect. Let's work on the back of the head now which is sides 3 and 4. Taking your knife, starting at line E, we're going to carve off the corner and round this portion of the block. We're going to round it up to line A. Perfect. Taking your combination ruler, make a center mark on the top of the block. Confirm that it's dead center by doing this. Perfect. Now measure from that center 20 millimeters to the right, make a mark, and 20 millimeters to the left, make a mark. Take your carving knife, and we're going to make a stop cut on line D right there. And then go on top of the block and we're going to carve all the way up this line. But we're not going to do this in one shot. We're going to nibble at it. So stop cut. We're going to keep on doing this until we get to that line that we made on top. Just like that. Now let's do the other side. From line C, 
we're going to measure three millimeters below and mark a line. This line is going to help us when we carve the concave portion of the top of the head. See, these areas. These areas don't go below three millimeters. Take your knife, using a push cut, we're going to scoop the wood out. See, that's how it should look. We can also use a gouge. This gouge happens to be a number seven, 10 millimeter wide. I moved on to the other side, same technique. Perfect, that's how it should look. The head on this completed carving has a width of 51 millimeters. Our project has right now a width of 54 millimeters. So I'm going to remove one and a half millimeters on the right and left side of the head. So I'm going to mark some guidelines. And I do this by taking my combination roller, adjusting it to one and a half millimeters and transfer the lines. Then taking my knife, using the push cut, I'm gonna carefully carve up to those lines. Notice my knife is digging into the wood, so that's telling me I'm going against the grain. So I flipped it around and I'm going to carve with the grain. Let's remeasure. Perfect. 51 millimeters. Taking a short break from carving, I'm taking a circle template and drawing three circles onto a thin piece of cardboard. The first one is 32 millimeters, the second is 17 and the third is nine millimeters. Then taking a hobby knife, I'm carefully cutting the circles out. This is the guy we're gonna use first. Taking your 32 millimeter circle, we're gonna, we're gonna use it to sketch in the shape of the head. So we're gonna line it up with the edge of the wood. And taking your pencil, we're gonna sketch in the shape. Perfect. See? Let's do the other side now. You can also do this freehand, whatever you feel comfortable doing. Now taking your knife, we're going to use a push cut and gently carve up to those lines. Let's do this side now. At this stage, this is how your project should look. Now let's sketch in the wing profile. I just did that freehand, but you can use the same template we used in the previous step. Just line it up. and sketch it. Now 
Now this line, this line I'm about to sketch right now to line H, I try to make that around nine millimeters from the edge. So let me show you that again. This line here, if you measure that line to the edge, it's around nine millimeters on all four sides. Once again, take your knife, using the push cut, we're going to carve up to those lines. Make a stop cut on line H, because we don't want to carve below line H. Line H is reserved for the, for the branch and for the claws. Looking good. Again, stop cut on line H and gently carving up to line H. Let's turn to the back of the block. From line E down to the bottom, we're going to shade in a slope. This is wood we're going to remove. It's this excess wood that's going to get in the way when we're carving the wings. Let me show you a finished project. There you go. And let's see if I can position it that you that will make more sense. Okay. See? That's just excess wood. So we're going to go back to our push cut and gently carve off this wood. Your project should look something like this. Going back to the front of the block, we're going to sketch in an arc to prepare for the belly. Notice this arc starts at line E and ends at line H. Make a stop cut on line E and gently cough into line E because you don't want to slip and rip off the beak. Okay, just nibble at it. Make a stop cut and gently cough into it. I see too many people get sloppy here and they, they rip off a chunk of the wood. Again, stop cut and gently cough into it. At this time, I would recommend that you measure from the center line to the carved portion on both sides and make sure they're equal. If they're not, just take your knife and gently carve away and remeasure until you're happy with it. Before proceeding to step four, I want to make sure the left side is symmetrical with the right side. And the way I do that is I use a contour gauge. They come in two different versions. This is a plastic one, and then there's a metal one. I feel the metal one is more accurate. So what I do is I firmly press it against the side profile, just like that, and then I compare it to the other profile. If they don't match, go back with your knife and carefully adjust it until you're happy with it. Let's work on the belly section now. Take your 32 millimeter template, line it up with the center line as well as line F. 
we're going to trace the arc now move the template to the other side and connect the two aux together right in the middle. I'm going to drop it down a little bit, make a little longer feather. See? Taking your carving knife, we're going to make a stop cut along those guidelines. But we're going to stop at line H. We don't want to go past line H. Continue making the stop cut now. The tip of the knife is not going very deep. It's only going about two millimeters into the wood. Next, I'm taking a number three sweep gouge. It's about eight millimeters wide. And I'm gently carving into that stop cut. You don't have to use a gouge for this step. You can use a carving knife. Just be careful. You don't want to rip off any wood past the stop cut. What we're doing is we're, we're pushing the belly down into the body, reserving wood for the feathers. Let's make another stop cut on line H and on the center line and continue recessing the belly. Continue on this side. Perfect. Now we're going to work on this section. We're going to push the wings back and that's going to bring the belly out. So on line G to line H, we're going to carve this wood further back on an angle. This is the angle that we're going to carve it at. See? Make a stop cut on the center line as well as line H. And then take a knife or a gouge, starting at line G, we're going to carve down to H on an angle. See? See I'm gripping this gouge? I'm gripping it with my thumb and another finger, and I'm using my thumb to push the gouge into the stop cut. I'm not going past the center line, because remember, we want to pop out the belly. We want to push the wings back. Now let me show you with the knife. With the knife, I'm using a paring cut. Perfect. Notice the angle. And further into the project, we're going to extend this wing. just like that. Moving on to the other side now, we're going to use the same exact technique. This is how your project should look. Let's work on this area now. We're going to carve this area into the belly. See? This is how it's going to look. I'm going 
going to take my carving knife and I'm going to start rounding the edges. We're just nibbling at it. We're not going to take aggressive cuts. Just small little cuts and carefully round it. This is how your carving should look. Before we work on the wings, I noticed the back of the head has a little too much wood. Let me show you this angle. See? So let's sketch a little guard line. And then take your knife using the push cut technique. Let's carve down to that line. Much better. Now let's round the back of the head. Work our way down to the middle. And now the bottom portion. On the bottom of the block, we're going to take our combination ruler and draw a center line and connect that line with the center line on the top of the block. Using your 32 millimeter circle template, we're going to use it to sketch in the back of the wing. Notice the template is resting against line E. The bottom of the wing comes down on an angle, and we're going to reserve wood for the branch. So this space is going to be removed. Let's do it over here as well. Let's complete this arc by just coming right down to the center line. Perfect. Now this wing overlaps this wing. So let's start sketching a little bit. So the width of the bottom of the wing is 19 millimeters. Take your ruler or dividers or whatever you're going to use to measure. And just measure 19 millimeters or three quarters of an inch. Make a mark. And take your pencil and sketch a line. This is going to be your top wing. What I like to do is I do a little arrow to remind myself that this is going to be the wing that's under. Using your knife, we're going to make a stop cut along these lines. But this is the wing that's under. So we're going to stop right, right here. We don't want to damage the wing that's over. 
This is the wing that's over. So this stop cut's going to go all the way down. But just be careful. You don't want to slip and cut your hand. Now on an angle, take your knife and carve into a stop cut. Perfect. Let's work over here now. Remember I made the stop cut and now I'm carving into that stop cut. But let me show you another tool. I'm using a number three gouge. And I'm using the same technique. I'm just going to slide into that stop cut. But look at my fingers holding the tool. See my thumb is sliding the tool. I'm also holding it into the palm of my hand. Notice the tools, I'm sliding the tool into the wood with my fingers. Let's continue over here, making a stop cut, and another stop cut along the branch. And we're going to remove the wood now between the two stop cuts, the shaded portion, this portion here. Good. Now let me show you another tool. This is a skew chisel. The blade is six millimeters long. And I'm using the same technique. It's just easier to get into this spot. Jumping back to where the wings overlap, we're going to make this section deeper by once again making a stop cut and carving into the stop cut. Now, besides a carving knife, you can also use a gouge or a skew chisel. Let me show you the skew chisel. Nope, going against the grain. Let's turn around. Now, this skew chisel is 14 millimeters wide. Okay, good. Now let's go back and remove all the pencil lines off the wings. We don't need these lines anymore. Notice I'm not removing big chunks of the wood off. I'm just removing paper thin shavings. Now we're going to go over the wing section and start rounding over any sharp edges. Let's turn the carving around and continue carving with the grain. If I didn't turn the block around, I was gonna wind up carving 
into the grain. With the experience, you'll get a feel for it. Worst case is your knife digs into the wood, and you just stop what you're doing and just turn the block until your knife is carbon with the grain. I switched back to a shallow sweep gouge. This one is 16 millimeters wide to remove the rest of the pencil lines on the wing. Let's go back to where the wings overlap Make a deeper cut. Okay, good. And continue removing the pencil lines. And once again, we're going back to carving where the wings overlap. Carving a little bit deeper. And that's going to allow us to shape, curve the wing. See what I'm doing with the gouge? I'm trying to round the wing so it looks like it's flowing underneath the other wing. Switching back to the top wing, doing the same thing, rounding it and removing the pencil lines. This is how your project should look. Sketch a horizontal line at the same height as the top of the wings and take your knife and start removing the wood on that line. But don't carve past the two center lines in the back of the head. So what we're doing is thinning out the back of the head and also reserving some wood for the feathers between the wings. Let's take a look. Okay, add a little bit more separation over here. And the back of the head looks flat now, so we're going to round that. We're going to round it right here. Switching back to the area where we're going to have feathers between the wings, adding a little bit more separation. And that should be good.
when I compare the finished project with the one I'm working on now, you can tell that there's a concave curve in the back of the head. This area is concaved. The reason why I'm doing that is I don't want it to look like it came from a square block of wood. I want to add a little bit more style to the back of the head. So using those center lines that I told you not to remove, we're going to take a, a medium sweep gouge. I like to use a number 7, 10 millimeter wide. We're going to make concave cuts right on the center lines. Now the second one. Your project should look something like this. The next step is taking a, a shallow sweep gouge, like this number three, and we're just going to remove the sharp edges to blend these concave cuts into the back of the head. Then switching to your knife, continue rounding the back of the head. We're blending in all the cuts now and removing any flat areas. Like over here. Taking a little break, let's look at the progress. We still have more, more rounding to do. Let me try to show you how your project should look. See how the back of the head is concave now on both sides and how everything's rounded. We're going to do the same thing in the front now. Any sharp edges over here, over here, 
Anywhere you see sharp edges, we're going to take a knife and we're just going to round it. But we're not going to touch the front of the head yet. Okay, looking good. Since we're up to doing the head feathers, let's add the final shape of the head. Starting at the beak. Let's add some style to it. Drop it down a little bit. There we go. Grab your knife, and we're going to start doing a push cut. Let's move this guy out of the way. Okay, starting at the beak, using the push cut, gently carve away. Looks a lot nicer now. Then using a pair of dividers on the center lines. I'm going to measure the height to make sure it's symmetrical on both sides. If one of the sides is too high, we carve that side and we measure. Now the feathers. This is fun. We're going to first carve a border that's three to five millimeters wide. So take your combination ruler, adjust it to three to five millimeters, and resting against the block. We're going to use the corner of the ruler to scrape the block. Try not to go all the way down. See? See? Just a little corner. Just using it to scrape the wood. Don't apply a lot of pressure. Let's do this side. Again, same thing. But don't go all the way down. Just try to join the tip. Good. Taking your pencil, let's, let's highlight these areas. And the center line. Perfect. Make a stop cut along these lines. This is end grain. So the wood's gonna feel a little different. It's gonna feel a little softer when making a stop cut. Once you do these stop cuts, take a shallow gouge, like number three, and gently carve into these stop cuts. Again, this is end grain, so you're going to feel it's going to be a little tougher going across the grain. Now we need to blend these cuts into the head. And round the top of the head into this area.
as I'm working on this step, I'm being careful not to remove all the centerline markings. See, this is what I'm talking about. I still have a center mark in over here, over here, as well as the back. It's important to keep these. It's just going to help us keep the carving symmetrical. Let's give this little guy some feathers. What I like to do is I start off with a, a nice a medium sweep gouge. This is a number eight, seven millimeter wide gouge. And I make a stop cut right here. Then I take a knife, a very sharp knife, and I cut a sliver of wood right behind that stop cut. Let me show you over here. Stop cut. Make sure that stop cut continues to the border right there and along that border over here. Make sure you don't cut into the border. And then just take a sliver of wood off behind. I like to make each row of feathers three millimeters high. So using your dividers, set the dividers at three millimeters and make a mark along the center line. And then on each mark, take your pencil and draw parallel lines. These parallel lines don't have to be perfect, so don't don't stress yourself out. Let's work on the second row now. Position your gouge that the stop cut starts around the center line and ends near the border. Okay, let's do this side. And taking a very sharp knife, carve a sliver of wood behind. Remember, it has, to, it has to be sharp because this is the end grain. This little guy is stubborn, he doesn't want to come out. Come on, there you go, perfect.
since we're finished with the feathers, it's safe to remove the center line on the top of the head now, right there. And go over each feather and carefully remove the pencil markings. Looking good. Using your combination ruler, resting it on the base, we're going to make a mark that's 54 millimeters. Let's do the other side. Then adjust it to be six millimeters. Rest it against the side like this and make a mark. Now let's take that little circle template we made earlier, position it that it's touching the horizontal and vertical line. Take your pencil and transfer onto the wood. We have to now make a stop cut around this circle. And I decided to use a gouge that's the same curvature. So this gouge is a number five, three millimeter wide. And all I'm doing is making stop cuts and working my way all around the circle. Now this is just one technique. You can use a carving knife or you can use a hobby knife like this little guy. The next step is taking a medium sweep gouge and gently carving into the stop cut. Work your way all the way around the eye. The size I'm using is a number seven, four millimeter wide, but it's not necessary to get the same size tool. Whatever you have in your toolbox that will generate the same effect. Now take your knife and let's round this eye. But be careful, when you're rounding a circle, you're gonna be going against the grain, with the grain, and across the grain. So just take little nibbles. I don't know about you, but my eye looks like a ravioli. But that's perfect. That's what I want it to look like. I want it to look nice around. Let's add some life to this little guy. We're going to put some eyelids on him. 
using the combination ruler, we're going to make two measurements. The top one is 59 millimeters and the bottom lid is 57 millimeters. Don't forget the little dot in the middle. Taking your carving knife or hobby knife, lightly make stop cuts on the upper and lower eyelid. I'm going to make several passes because I want to make sure I make a nice stop cut. Then on a slight angle, we're going to lightly carve into those stop cuts. If you apply too much force, you can easily chip the eyelids. Last but not least, I'm taking a number 11 gouge, that's one and a half millimeters wide. I'm making a stop cut right in the center of the eye. And then taking a hobby knife or a dental pick, I'm removing the excess wood. It's time to finish up the face details, so let's add this little guy over here. Now you can do this freehand, or you can use dividers. If you use dividers, set it for 13 millimeters. Make a mark. And then measure from here, make a mark. And then measuring from the base to the center line over here, measure 54 millimeters and make a mark. And then just sketch some lines, or you can use a straight edge. And taking your knife, let's make a stop cut here. Make another one on this line. And on a slight angle, you're going to cut on the left and the right side of this line. To pop out a little V-cut. Next, take the tip of your knife and gently make a concave cut. See, see I'm twisting my fingers. I'm carving across the grain. I'm going to go back and continue this concave cut. You can also use a gouge, like this is a number seven, four millimeter. Let's do this side now. For the ear detail, let's use the center line on top of the head. We'll carry it down. And take a medium sweep gouge, like I'm using a number nine, five millimeter wide. I'm going to start right below the top of the ear and just slide right down. Then taking a hobby knife or a carving knife, remove this. Perfect. Now it's time to go over the entire head and round all the edges. Like over here. See, all these sharp edges, we're gonna round this all over.
pick up your knife using the push cut technique we're going to round all these edges As you can see, I'm also removing the pencil lines. Remember the paper thin shavings. That's around the top of the ear now. We don't need the center line anymore, so it's, it's safe to remove it. Let's make a very slight rounded edge over here. Good. Now around this area. The way we're going to do this is taking a medium sweep gouge this happens to be a number seven four millimeter wide and I'm working my way all around the eye just nibbling at the edges you don't want to apply a lot of pressure because you don't want to slip and cut into the eye you just want to round the edges it adds a nice soft look to it The wings on the bottom are a little too wide for me, so we're going to taper them in by about six millimeters. And the belly, belly's sticking out a little too much, so we're going to push that back a little bit. Taking your carving knife, let's make a stop cut on line H. And let's carve up to that guideline we just drew. Okay, that's good. Let me show you the other side. We're going to do the same thing. Again, you'll know, carve up to the guideline. But watch what I do. I'm going to continue that angle. I'm going to continue down past the branch or line H. See, I'm just continuing the, the angle of the wing past line H. That pops out the branch even more. So 
So we still have to do this side. See that extra wood past the line H? We gotta remove that. Right there, see? Now I'm picking away the wood between the branch and the wing. And all I'm doing is making a stop cut along the branch and then a stop cut along the wing and twisting my knife to pop out the excess wood. I just repeat this step. See? Now that we've removed more wood behind the branch, we can add more life to these wings by having them curve behind the branch. And last but not least, let's push the belly back. This is one of my favorite steps, adding five rows of feathers. And the way we're gonna do this is using a combination ruler and a pencil to make some guidelines. So resting the combination ruler against the base, the first line is gonna be 38 millimeters, and the second one's gonna be 29 millimeters. And as you can see, went along the whole entire body and let me show you the third which is going to be 22 millimeters Since we push back the wings in the front, it's going to be hard to use the combination roller to continue this line. So I'm going to switch to a pair of dividers, adjust it to 22 millimeters, make some marks, and then grab your pencil to continue the line. The last line is easy to remember. It's the same height as line H, which is 13 millimeters. Sketch in a center line and make a nice wide center feather. This feather is about 10 to 11 millimeters wide. And pick up your dividers, set it to about five to six millimeters and let's start marking the width of each feather. It's one, two, we're gonna continue this all the way down the row. Now that we have equally spaced marks, we can sketch in the feathers.
taking your carving knife and starting at the center feather, we're going to make a stop cut along the guideline. Another stop cut here. And let's pop out that little chip. Perfect. Let's carve into that stop cut now. We want it to look like shingles on a roof. We want that overlapped effect. Let's do another one. Stop cut. Follow the guidelines. Curve around the bottom of the feather. And carve into that stop cut. And let's do one more. Before we start the second row, we gotta remove about two millimeters of wood below these feathers. This is gonna give us that step down shingles on the roof effect. We're going to repeat the same process that we did on the first row. We're going to continue with the shingles on the roof effect. So we're going to do the same thing. We'll make stop cuts on the bottom of these feathers and then come into those stop cuts to pick out about two millimeters worth of wood.
You don't have to use a carving knife to shape these feathers. You can also use gouges. Let me show you. This is a number eight, seven millimeter wide gouge. And look at, look at this perfect fit. And let me show you number seven. This is a number seven, six millimeter wide. So let's do one together. Stop cut. And then take your knife and remove this sliver of wood. Let's do a couple more with the number seven. And so all the feathers don't look the same. We'll make the last feather using a number number eight seven millimeter. For the fourth row of feathers, I made the front about three to four millimeters wide. See? And then towards the back, I went to five, six millimeters wide. We're using the same technique. Adjust your dividers and continue marking. Since this area is a little hard to get into, I'm going to use a different tool. I'm going to use a skew chisel, but same technique. Stop cut on the guideline. And on a slight angle, we're going to carve into that stop cut. With the last row of feathers, we want to remove some of the wood between the feathers and the, and the branch. So we're going to use the same technique that we've been doing throughout the whole project. Making a stop cut and then carving into that stop cut. And finally, laying out the feathers for the last row. Let's add a little separation between the feathers and the base. I'm going to sketch in a little guideline. Then I'm going to take a number 11, two millimeter wide gouge and carve a nice little ditch. Okay, and then take my knife and round the edge. See, just like that. And let's add some feathers right here. We're going to use the same technique as the wings. We're going to make stop cuts and then carve 
up to those stop cuts to generate those shingles on a roof effect. To add detail to the feathers, we're going to add a concave cut to each one. So let's draw a center line on each feather. And then taking a medium sweep gouge, we're going to use a number 8 3 millimeter wide. We're going to carve that center line right off. Good. Let's do the next one. Now taking a carving knife or a hobby knife, let's cut off the excess wood. Since this feather is a little wider than others, I picked up a number 7 10 millimeter wide gouge. And let's go back to the number eight, three millimeter wide. These guys over here are a little on the narrow side. So let's switch over to a number 11, three millimeter. See the curve and the width? These guys are a little hard to get to because of the reserve wood. So let's turn it around and gently carve each feather. Now I'm just going over each feather and just fine tuning all the cuts. With texture in the belly, let's use a really small number 11, one and a half millimeter wide gouge. And we're gonna take little cuts just like that. It's going to nibble at it. We're going to go over the whole entire belly. So just take your time. Take little cuts. I'm almost done. I'm just looking for any areas that I missed. Okay, looks like I'm done.
We're almost done now. Let's work on the claws. Taking your dividers or ruler, let's measure 13 millimeters to the left of this center line. Make a couple marks. And sketch a line. And let's do the same thing on this side, but this time it's to the right of the center line. Now make stop cuts on the lines we drew and carve up to them. This is gonna reserve the branch and the claws for us. Taking a break from the carving, let's study this finished piece. Notice how I carved the claws gripping the branch. So we're going to do the same thing here. The two blocks of wood that we reserved for the claws, we're going to round them. Look at this example. The tube represents the branch, and my fingers represent the claws. See, that's how your carving should look. I even carved a little separation between the claws, the branch, and the base by using a number 11 2 millimeter gouge. I went back to carving the branch. I felt the branch was a little too thick for me. My goal is to have a branch with a diameter of about 11 millimeters. With the branch carved to the diameter I would like it to be, we're going to sketch in the claws. Each claw is 3 millimeters wide. So just draw a line and mark 3 millimeters and draw the next line and continue that until you have a total of 6 claws. Now that we sketched out where the claws are going to be, let's trim the excess wood down up to the claw lines and making very small V cuts. We're going to start defining each claw. Do you see how I'm making the V cut? We're making a stop cut and then to the right of the stop cut on an angle we're carving into it and then to the left of the stop cut on an angle we're carving into it. I'm using the V-cut technique for all six claws. Don't forget to add some detail to the, the tip of each claw. 
I just like to just round them over. Now we're going to gently round each claw. Let's take small little slivers of wood. Your project should look something like this. Let's add some life to this branch now. Let's make a, a crack over here. We're going to hollow out this section. Make a little split over here. I'll put another one. And we're going to hollow out this section as well. To hollow out this area, I'm just using a number 11 3 millimeter. But you can also use a number 8 or a number 9 as well. All I'm doing is taking the gouge, starting at the outside of the branch, I'm carving towards the center. And when I reach the center, I just twist the gouge to remove the excess wood. Since the grain is running along the length of the wood, you got to be careful carving the detail into the branch. These areas are very brittle and they will crack if you apply too much pressure. So just nibble at it. Let's do this little guy. Just again, very light cuts. Ah, ah. See, see what I did? I just split the branch a little bit. So I'm not going to glue that little chip, I'm just going to carve it off. Now I'm carving a cavity into this branch. The way I'm doing that is I'm pushing my number 11, one and a half millimeter gouge into the branch at a 90 degree angle and I'm twisting it. I'm twisting and turning it and removing the excess wood from the, from the branch. Next, I'm picking up my knife and gently making a stop cut along my guidelines. And I stress gently because, again, the grain is running along the length, so this branch is brittle. And of course, carve up to the stop cut to remove the wood. To add texture to my branch, I'm using my number 11 gouges. I'm starting with a number 11, 2 millimeter wide, just making short little cuts. And then I jump to my 3 millimeter wide, and then I'll add my 1.5 millimeter wide cuts in there. The two areas that I notice people forget about is texture in the back of the branch and the wood between the two claws.
When it comes to some of my work in really small places, I like to use a wood burning unit with a skew tip instead of a writing tip. Let me show you how I do it. Using the point of the tip, I'm making little dots. And if you make little dots very close together, it's going to look like a line. See? Just like that. I use the pencil to sign my name, and using the technique I just showed you, I'm going to burn right over the signature. I don't like to use a pen or a marker when it comes to signing my work, because that could easily bleed into the wood, and especially that I wash my projects with soap and water, which will be the next step, you'll see it'll just it'll ruin the project. That's why I stick to a wood burning unit. Now I'm using a nice soft eraser to remove the pencil box. Please note, only do this step if the carving was from a solid block of wood with no glue involved. It's time to remove the dirt and grime from this little guy, and the way I do that is I use a soft bristle toothbrush, and a bar of soap. The soap I like to use has no perfumes or dyes in it. What we're going to do is we're going to wet the bar of soap, scrub the toothbrush, and give this guy a little bath. We're going to wash off the first coat of soap. We're going to scrub out the any soap that gets stuck in the cracks and crevices. Especially the top of the head. There we go. Then we're going to repeat this step. I'm giving it one final scrubbing with a toothbrush that has no soap loaded in its bristles. And I'm just trying to get all the soap out of the cracks and crevices.
Last but not least, I take a cotton rag, like an old t-shirt, and I gently dry them. And then I set them aside and let them dry fully for at least two days. Hey Bailey, Bailey girl, video's over. Man, <laughs> I hope the viewers didn't fall asleep also. Well, thanks everyone for watching and subscribing.